let's cover how to make borax crystals. This is so cool and I love making these things because you can then use them as decorations. Hang them in your window, hang them on your Christmas tree, whatever you want, you get to decide. Let's go. Lately, I've been on a bit of a tear on super saturated solutions. Last week we did rock candy crystals and this week we are doing borax crystals. What is borax? Well, I'm glad you asked. Borax is a cleaning agent that has some, I don't know, natural odor removing properties or something like that. I don't know, I don't clean, I am science. Not true. Make sure you do clean your laboratory after you do each experiment. Yeah. Anyways, what is borax? Borax is actually a compound of boron, specifically sodium tetraborate. Uh, is it boring? No, it's boron. Haha, <laughs> never mind. Anyways, we are going to be making some very beautiful borax crystals in super saturated solutions, which is so cool. This is one of my favorite experiments to do with younger kids because once you make it, you can actually have a very cool crystal structure that you can hang on your Christmas tree or you can hang in your window and they get to decide what shape and what color it actually is. So the quick and easy method of making borax crystals, you need three quarters of a cup of borax for every 500 milliliters of water. You heat it up on a stove, you pour in the borax, make sure it's all mixed together, and then you hang a pipe cleaner in whatever shape you want inside of the borax, and then after a couple of hours or overnight, you pull it out and you have a beautiful crystal formation on the pipe cleaner inside of your solution. But this is not the quick and easy method, this is the science method! So I'm going to show you how to use solubility curves and we're going to go into the science of super saturated solutions. First things first, we need to look up the solubility graph of borax, or sodium tetraborate. Now, let's just look it up. Oh, look, here it is right here. I happen to have it on my phone. So the solubility curve of borax, hopefully, uh, maybe I'll put it up here or something. I don't know. Looking at this curve, there isn't a huge jump at lower temperatures. So we need to actually get the water quite hot in order to dissolve a lot of borax and it's that super saturated solution of the borax being dissolved in the hot water that as the water cools down the borax needs to escape and go back to its crystalline formations and then that is what clings to our seed agent which is the pipe cleaners all right let's go i have a heat resistant beaker and i have water let's pour in 400 milliliters. That should leave enough room for the borax and then we can just dip in some pipe cleaners and have it really nice and spicy. Okay, so if you look at the solubility graph that I have here of borax, which is sodium tetraborate, uh, on the horizontal axis we have the temperature in Celsius, on the vertical axis we have the solubility of borax in grams per liter. So we see that there's gonna be 400 grams per liter at 90 degrees Celsius. And some quick maths, that's gonna be about 160 grams in 400 milliliters of water. So I have my little scale here in my cup. We're gonna need 160 grams of borax. There. Perfect amount on, look at that. Okay, so we have borax, 157 grams, that will be close enough, and we have 400 milliliters of water. This means I need to warm this water up to 90 degrees Celsius in order for all of this to dissolve in here. So, might as well warm it up. I have a thermometer. Now, you, again, you do not need to go through all of this work in order to make borax crystal. You can simply pour one liter of water into a big pot and put a cup and a half of borax or until you can't dissolve any more, and that's all you need. I'm doing this because I like solubility graphs and I like to do the science behind what this is, and if you want to use this as a teaching method, this is great. Once again, I'm going to emphasize, don't do this by yourself unless you're a competent, responsible adult. So don't just turn on the stove and pour in a bunch of borax. Borax actually is kind of, eh, it's not great if you get it on your skin. It's bad if you get it in your eyes. So just be careful, wear your safety glasses, and don't take unnecessary risks. All right? All right. Good talk. While we're waiting for this to warm up to near boiling, let's prep our pipe cleaner. Yay! So uh, 
because I don't have a huge space here, I'm actually gonna make this into kind of a, a geode maybe, I don't know. So pretty much I'm just gonna carry this back into itself, uh, just like, I don't know, just like that. Ta-da! It'll be a nice little decoration. Next step is gonna be attach a bit of string to it. The next step is to find a piece of wood or a spoon even to lay across your beaker so that you can tie this just so that it's gonna hang fully into the solution. So I'm gonna just attach that there. So our water is getting pretty hot so I'm gonna add in some of my borax solution. So just gonna sprinkle that in there. Now you do not have to use a solubility graph in order to do this. In fact, all you really need to do is make sure that it is fully dissolved inside of solution. All right, I am convinced that this is pretty much a super saturated solution. So I'm gonna add in my food coloring now. Again, we decided blue. So let's just add in a few drops of blue. The more food coloring you put in, the stronger the color is going to be. Oh, that's a nice blue right there. All right, I'm gonna turn this off here so we don't need to have this any hotter. This is a super saturated solution, which is so cool. Now we're just gonna drop in our seed for the crystals to grow on. I did turn that off. We're gonna drop that in while it is still hot and make sure it's not hitting the bottom. There we go. Now we get to do the old standby when working with anything with science. We wait. So really minimum you need to wait overnight in order to get any crystals. The longer you leave the pipe cleaner in the solution, the bigger the crystals are going to get. No, that's not quite true. The more crystals you will get. So if you leave this for a couple of days, you will get a lot of little crystals all over the pipe cleaner. If you want big crystals, you have to cool it down very, very slowly. And you can do that by wrapping it in tin foil or leaving it for on a very, very low heat for a while, but I don't really recommend doing anything except for maybe insulating it a little bit. Now, this is what your solution should look like after you take it off of the heat. It should be completely clear. There shouldn't be any borax on the bottom of the beaker or the container that you're using, and you should be able to see, unless you've used too much food coloring, the pipe cleaner hanging freely without touching any of the sides. Now the final step is to make sure that no dust gets into your container while the crystals are forming. So, it doesn't have to be fancy, just put on a piece of paper so that dust doesn't fall in and create a seed for the crystals to form on. Using the magic of editing, we're actually back and this is two weeks in the future, but we didn't need the full two weeks, we only needed a couple of hours. So the way this works is, it was perfect. This is a beautiful crystal structure. Well, hopefully you can see that that really it appeared within the first couple of hours. Now that means a few things. That means that it was cooling down a little bit too fast to get really large crystals, but that also means you don't have to leave it overnight. And if I had this to do over again, I would use a lot more food coloring because right now it's a kind of like clear crystals with a blue tinge, which is cool if that's what you want to go for. But if you want that pure colored crystals, use a lot more food coloring. This has been really fun. This is Destructive Creativity. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Bye.